Hi everyone, it's Andrea and I'm here with my December wrap up. This is going to be quite a long one because I've got something like 18 or 19 books to talk to you about. Normally I do, would split it into two but I'm just going to do one one so I'll be as quick as I can because some of these I've already posted reviews for or I will be posting reviews for shortly. So the first book I read in December was uh, Marin Forever by Bose Hadley. This is a lovely book of quotes from famous people of today and yesterday. I have posted a full review of this so I will link that down below so I'm not going to talk about this anymore but I gave this four out of five. The second book I haven't got with me is actually in the other room and I can't bother to go and get it and that was the Glasgow Coma Scale um, by Neil D.A. Stewart. Um, it was an odd book, all the characters not sympathetic at all, um, didn't really care what would happen to them, Lynn was annoying, um, caught up in herself, in love with Angus who was the other character um, but uh, you know he's not in love with her but she's in love with him but he does take advantage of her kindness and generosity it felt like a pin to play but and i'm sure i've talked about this book before yes i have in my books i didn't like very much which has already gone up which is amazing so yeah a bit like a pin to play but without the actual pin to -ness. So, I mean, if you want to, you know, it's, it's, it, it is in my books I didn't like, wrap up it. Yeah, I mean, a pin to play, you have to watch it. It makes sense if you watch it. There's just a lot of people standing around talking, and I felt that was the same of that one. The third book I read was Heartless by Marissa Meyer. I love this book. Fantastic origin story, origins of the Queen of Hearts and how she became evil. I love this. I read this very, very quickly. It didn't take me long. I think I've read it in two sittings um, and it broke my heart. I gave it five out of five stars and I have already posted a full review, so I will link that down below. Uh, the next book I read was Flash Forward by Robert J. Sawyer. Now this is a book about an experiment that goes wrong. The experiment is at CERN um, and they're using the Large Hadron Collider to find the, what's it? Something that caused the Big Bang. Um, but instead of that happening, it causes, the experiment causes the whole world to black out for two minutes. So in that time, planes crash that aren't on autopilot, cars crash, people get killed walking across the road, um, you know, various things that you could do which you wouldn't realise, you just get, they just die. But those people who don't die and who are unconscious for those two minutes experience a flash forward. They see what their life will be like in 20 years time. Um, and the premise is, is the future fixed or can it be changed? So if you saw something you didn't like, can you change it? Or is it something you that is fixed permanently? I really enjoyed this book. It, it was very well written. Um, it was a gripping and obviously sci-fi story. Um, there were bits of it where I thought it was dragging on a bit, even though it's not a very thick book. But I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I read it. And I gave that one four stars. Four out of five. Enjoyed that one. The next book is another five star read for me. Um, I did start it as part of Nonfiction November but never finished it. And that's uh, Roses from the Earth. The biography of Anne Frank by Carol Ann Lee. Um, obviously, we, if you haven't read Anne Frank, where have you been living? Beautifully written biography of Anne Frank. Uh, gives us the story of the girl behind the diary and her family. And what happened in the concentration camps and how her di diary came to be published um how it was found and how they edited it and how certain things were taken out of it to protect the family um but yes um it's definitely worth reading read it in conjunction with the diary of Anne Frank it's absolutely a fantastic read you must read it i read so so much fiction non-fiction because of non-fiction november and i'd had a bad day at work i decided i just needed some comfort reading so i just read five go off in a caravan by Enid Plyton. um i don't know how many stars i gave this four probably um i love the f uh, the famous famous five um basically the, the the famous five go on holiday they go caravanning they take a caravan with two horses and they go off um and make friends with this boy from the circus and as usual they stumble across a crime and it's how they solve the crime they're lovely simple stories they're so easy to read and it just reminds me when i was a kid and i do love these little editions which i'm going to try and find more of just because they were published the year i was born so they're actually the same age as me so i like that 
Then I read Sherlock by Martin Fayo, The Facts and Fiction Behind the World's Greatest Detective. This was one of the books sent to me by Carlton Publishing. I really enjoyed this. If you are a Sherlock Holmes fan, this is a mess. He explores the creation and legacy of Sherlock Holmes. There's a biography of Holmes as well as to Arthur Conan Doyle. It takes us through real crimes, the real detectives, the people the stories were, that were based on. And it also gives us, you know, um, the history of Holmes on stage and screen right up to present day Sherlock with Benedict Cumberbatch. I liked this book and I gave it I think four out of five. I have posted um or three and a half out of five. Three and a half out of five. Um I have posted a full review of this so I'll, again I will link that one down below. The next book I've read was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Yay in my gorgeous heartbacks. Not a lot to say about Harry Potter except for I love this one, it's my favourite so far. There's a post-it note in it for a reason because it, um, they're talking about how um, Hogwarts and the other schools of magic are hidden and it says <clears throat> It's bewitched, said Hermione. If a mother looks at it, all they'll see is a mouldering old room with a sign over the entrance saying Danger, do not enter, unsafe. And I thought well the muggles I know that wouldn't stop them <laughs> because I'm sure that if um, anybody who takes photographs would you know it'd be overrun by urban explorers within five minutes if they came across it <laughs> it really would so but be, you know it's nice and innocent thing to say in a book but when you're older and you know about the, the intricacies of urban exploring not that I've done any um, that sort of sign wouldn't stop an explorer they would be in there wanting to have a look so I wonder what they would find if they actually did go in there but yeah, so that was a, that was a five out of five for me. I loved it. Um, <clears throat> then I read my first Persephone, which was Still Missing by Beth Gutchin. This was a lovely story about Alex and his mother, whose name I can't remember, Mrs. Selkie, Alexander Selkie and his mother. And um, it was an easy to read, heartrending story about Alex who goes missing. Um, and how his mother copes with it, how she never gives up that he will be found, that he is alive out there. And um, totally heartrending, beautifully written, beautiful edition by Persephone Books, and I gave it four. I enjoyed it. The next thing I read, and we are into Christmas week now, yay! Well, so I read Christmas week, basically. And I read the two Nora Roberts books that are in this one edition, which is Local Hero. <laughs> excuse me, Anna Will in a way. <clears throat> in Local Hero, Mitch meets uh, Mitch meets a single mother who moves into the apartment above him. He is a comic book writer. She works in a bank and has a young son. The young son is a mad fan of Mitch's comics books. They do fall in love reluctantly on her part because she's afraid of being abandoned again after her son's father disappeared, didn't want anything to do with him doesn't even care he's got a son so she's <coughs> worried that the same thing will happen again but Mitch isn't is going to make sure that that doesn't happen and that Hester will fall in love with him it's a nice easy story to read lovely for this time of year I think I gave it three out of five stars it wasn't the best thing I've ever read but I did enjoy it and it was yeah you know, I got through it quite quickly and the second book in this one I preferred which was A Will in a Way so basically it's about this girl Pandora and a guy named Michael their uncle dies and he doesn't want to leave his fortune to his closest relatives because they're all complete and utter nutter tossers I would say and that you know they just you know they're just in interested in money and power so he leaves it to the people who actually cared about him um and actually cared about the house and that was uh, Pandora and Michael the provisor being they can't stand each other they have to live together in the house for six months but some members of the family aren't happy with that and they try and get them out by causing various problems and this is how they find out who did it. So it's kind of like a whodunit, it's sort of like a Agatha Christie type thing but without an actual murder. I gave this one four out of five because I really enjoyed that one. Uh, the next one was a very Christmassy book and it was Heidi Swain's Mince Pies and Mistletoe at the Christmas Market. This is a lovely, well-written book. I really enjoyed the story. It was believable. It was just something nice to read. I couldn't sleep Christmas Eve night, Christmas morning. One of the one of the nights I couldn't sleep. Yeah, Christmas night, Christmas Eve. So I I like read it for like four hours and just read it in one go. And I really enjoyed the the story and how they got the market up and running and and the Christmas stalls and 
yeah it was very nice I gave it four out of five stars and I'd recommend that you pick this one up if you're into this it is a romance but there's more to it than just romance there's, there is a good plot in there then I read the book I got in a book of the brew which was 2am at Cat's Pajamas by Marie Helene Bertino that's about Madeline Altamari and some other people in her life I did find that I wanted to know more about Madeline and her singing and her mother who died rather than everybody else but I did enjoy this book gave it three out of five it's a good solid read um it is strangely written because it jumps from person to person um I'll tell you what they're doing but it was it all came together at the end and it all made sense and I, yeah, I really enjoyed it it was a nice read then one of my favorites from the month another four star how to find love in a bookshop by Veronica Henry I like the story about Amelia who um, whose father dies and she he leaves her his bookshop the bookshop's paid for there's you know he doesn't have to there's no mortgage or anything but the bookshop's only just ticking over there are some debts that her father's incurred he wasn't ever worried about it and this is about how she turns the business around but not only that we also learn about the customers who come into the bookshop and their the books that they read and their love lives and it's just really really sweet it is it's a really lovely read and it just felt so nice reading this at Christmas even though it's not a Christmassy book it just felt like a really feel good thing that you like to read so yes this is another one I would recommend I really really enjoyed this book next I read I finally finished it um the time tall man Thomas Hardy by Claire Tomlin yay <laughs> it took me long enough I've had this book sitting around for two years it belongs to a friend of mine I finally read and finished it I really enjoyed it because I'm a big Thomas Hardy fan I love Thomas Hardy's books um I enjoyed the fact that it told the entire story of Thomas Hardy from obviously from just before his birth till he he died about his two wives um, Emma and Florence but not only that it gave you a background to the stories and his inspirations for all the stories as well and his poetry um, yeah I really enjoyed this book I gave it four did I give it four I think I gave it four yeah, I gave it four uh, out of five. I loved the way it told you the background of the books, what the publishers thought of them when they first, he first tried to get them published. It's just fascinating stuff. If you like Thomas Hardy, I'd recommend you read this book. It was really, really good. We're near the end now, only another four to go. Then I read The Little Book of Audrey Hepburn, which was uh, by Caroline Jones, even though it says it's by somebody else on Goodreads. I'm not actually sure why. Uh, this again was one of the books that was sent to me by um, Carlton Publishing. I'm not going to say much about this other than it's a lovely book with lots of photographs of Audrey in it, um, a brief overview of her life and career because I will be posting a full review of this fairly shortly so look out for that soon. Then on the 29th, 30th and 31st it was time for Holiday Book Tubathon. There was only three challenges, uh, read a book you were given, read a book from a, a genre you just discovered and read a, a book with your favourite colour on the cover. So I read um, as a new genre, Stalking Jack the Ripper by Kerry Malice Kako. I enjoyed this book, I gave it four out of five stars. Again I'm going to post a full review of this because obviously I do collect books on Jack the Ripper, I know quite a bit about it so I'm just going to explain a few of the differences between the reality and the, the book but which was brilliantly written. I love this book, I would definitely pick up anything else by this author, this is her first, first book I think. Yeah it's her debut novel, uh, I really enjoyed it so I will be looking for stuff by Kerry in the future. So, this is a definite recommendation for, for 20. If you haven't read it, pick it up, read it. You must read it. The next book I book is, oh, look, it's got a post-it, which means I want to tell you something about the book. And this is uh, book seven in the Chronicles of St. Mary's, Lies, Damned Lies in History. In this book, Max is pregnant. Um, they go from Georgian London to Arthur's Britain and from Stonehenge to a desperate hunt for King John's treasure. Um, how can Max put things right? She is grounded because of something she did because she had, felt she had to. Now, part of the King Arthur story takes place on the Heritage Palace Welsh borders. And basically, it, they're talking about life on a Welsh farm um, and how dangerous it is. You can roll a tractor, done that. My dad stayed the whole day at my bedside waiting for me to come round and then tried to strangle me. There's chemicals that make your eyes drop out and your lungs burst into flame. Then there's the weather, sunburn. Hold on, said Marker. In Wales? Well, all right. 
exposure then. For me, that's funny living in Wales because one of the things we always say about Wales is it always rains. In fact, it's probably raining right now. Um, it does, but that's why it's so green. <laughs> we, we can't, and we can't have everything. We can't have beautiful green countryside without rain to make it green. So anyway, that's enough of that. I thought it was funny. But yeah, so this is book seven um, in the Chronicles of St. Mary. Uh, I really, again, really enjoyed it. Five out of five stars. It made sense. Um, it tied up a lot of the loose ends nicely. I really, really enjoyed this. I've loved this series. I would recommend you pick them up. They are so much fun. And I did finish my third book for Booktubeathon, the holiday one, and I read Was by Jeffrey Ryman, which is a story, I would say it's Jonathan's story. He um, is a young man, well, middle aged, he's in his 40s, it's 1989, he's dying of AIDS, and he wants to discover the truth about The Wizard of Oz and Judy Garland and Dorothy Gale. So he basically wants to track down the truth. So he goes on a pilgrimage, he goes, visits the town where Judy Garland grew up in Lancaster, California. He travels to, to Kansas where Dorothy was uh, reported to live. And in this book, there is a real girl named Dorothy Gale. It's spelled differently. She did have a doctor, Toto, and she did stay with Auntie, Auntie Emma and Uncle Henry. Her story is not a happy one, um, but at some point she meets a substitute teacher named Frank Baum, the guy who wrote the Oz stories, and, and so on. And it's all linked together by um, this, uh, 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 this man who, when Dorothy is old and basically in a home, he is taking care of her. He decides he wants to find out why people are in these insane time and what goes wrong with them, because it is like she's, she's in a crazy house type place, you know, because she's she was committed because she did a terrible temper and she was very strong and he finds out that her, all her history and that she you know and then that he, he finds out about her meeting Frank and he decides that he doesn't want to get married as a young man and just just join the army and stay and make a career of it he wants to do more so when he comes out of the army because he had to be drafted because everybody has conscript, conscript, blah, conscription in those days he then became a psychologist psychologist and psychiatrist and he um in 1989 is counseling jonathan who's dying of aids and it links the story together beautifully because he, jonathan and bill davison is the name of the guy that met the real dorothy um helped him track down the truth and they find out that Dorothy was a real person. It was a lovely story. I think I gave it three out of five because it's very heartbreaking. It's hard to read in points, very sad, but it was brilliant and I would definitely recommend that you pick this one up if you see it. It's been out a long time now. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I picked it up. I picked it up at my local supermarket off the charity shop for 50p. You can't go wrong, can you? So those are all the books that I read in December. It was quite a few. I'm back on form now after non-fiction November which was my lowest month so I'm actually going to go and crack on and do some more reading so I hope you do too if you've read any of those books you know leave me a comment let me know what you think as well because I, I'd love to have a conversation about some of these stories um if you've got any books that are similar to any ones I've mentioned any recommendations let me know don't forget to like this share this excuse me leave a comment and of course subscribe and I will see you very very soon bye bye now